All right, so let's look at the next page. So we did that first part really to get to this part. So this is really the most important. When you're approaching the synthesis question, your argument will, must drive the essay. Support your thesis or point of view. Uh, support for your thesis or point of view comes from whatever you know about the issue and the sources provided. Therefore, it is essential that you spend a bit of time thinking about the issue presented, developing your own point of view, recognizing the complexity of the issue, and establishing the critical context for the reader. So here is the definition or the questions you ask for the critical context. Why is this an issue that is important? Why is it significant? Or why is it worthy of discussion? So that's our key, right? All right, so let's answer these questions. Why must a monument be carefully planned? So now think about everything that y'all said, because y'all said, man, this is hard. So let's think about, like, why must a monument be carefully planned? Have to have, like, the accurate okay, so we need an accurate representation of the person or the event, right? Okay, why else? There must be some powerful message, as in Queen Beyonce, right? What else? Why is planning a monument important? Okay, so we have to make sure that it what? Yeah, that it withstands like that it withstands time, right? Why else? What else must you consider? Yeah, the popularity. If it will like offend. Okay, offend anybody. So popularity of the person or the event. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean you can't really have a monument over like something or for someone or something that nobody really understands or knows about, right? It's hard for people to understand unless you put it in a place where many people come to, then you're going to drive the traffic to it, right? Anything else we need? I like the idea of offending people, right? You have to be very careful. Right? You have to be politically correct. Anything else that we need to consider? So think about this. All of this, all of these ideas came about from your process of trying to plan your own monument, right? So look, establishing a critical context for your essay gives your writing power in so many ways. Your diction will be more forceful, your tone more impassioned, your reader more affected by the strength of your belief and argument. It also makes your argument central to the essay. So by doing this, you create your voice for the paper. And that's the big, that's a big concern. In, um, in synthesis, if you just basically summarize and spit back the documents, you're not getting higher than a four. Because all you did was summarize everything. You didn't come out the other end with your own opinion. So this helps to create your own opinion. And I think one of the documents that you read last night actually talked about planning before you get in. And that's what we're going to talk about today, too. All right. All right. Let's turn to the next page. So a synthesis essay asks you to take a position on the issue presented and incorporate perspectives from at least three sources to provide you with your own thinking. So I'm going to kind of show you the format of this, all right? So always in the first body paragraph, you're always going to have like background information, okay? And this is the way it's been set up. It's changed. It's evolved over time. But I really think that, um, you know, in the past four or five years, probably six years, it stayed about the same, like the structure of it. So the format shouldn't change, but you should always have these parts. So we have to prep you for anything. So if you walk in there May 11th and the structure is different, just find these pieces because these pieces will always be there. Okay. The middle one is going to be your task and your prompt. And then your last one is going to be your directions for like the, the general essay or formatting. And then at the bottom, you're always going to have your list of sources. All right, so let's read. The need to memorialize events or people is complex. In some cases, monuments honor moments of great achievement, while in other cases, monuments pay homage to deep sacrifice. A monument's size, location, and materials are all considerations in planning and creating a memorial to the past. So what this paragraph does is this makes the prompt open to everybody. So you don't have an advantage if you have visited um, a memorial or a monument over those kids who have not. Now, obviously, you have your own experiences if you have visited a memorial, right? 
um, or a monument, but those kids that have not had the opportunity to have that, then you're not going to be at an advantage over them. So this first body paragraph kind of makes it a level playing field for everybody. All right. So here's your task or prompt. Read the following seven sources carefully, including the introductory information for each source. Then in a well-organized essay that synthesizes at least three sources for support. So you have to have at least three. I'm going to tell you how to have more later. More does not always mean better. Examine the factors a group or agency should consider in memorializing an event or person and in creating a monument. Okay, so there are two parts to this essay. So then you don't have to read the directions of format because they're always the same, but I'll read them to you now. Make sure your argument is central. Use the sources to illustrate and support your reasoning. Avoid merely summarizing the sources. Indicate clearly which sources you are drawing from, whether through direct quotation, paraphrase, or summary. I would rather you not have summary. Direct quotation is your strongest. Paraphrase as long as you do it well. You may cite the sources as source A, B, etc., or by using the description in parentheses. So this is MLA, right? But I want you to use the letters. So I want you to cite using the letters. Why? Because in, in like just the stress of the test, it'll be easier for you to go through and identify the three sources that you've used just by quickly looking at the letters rather than looking at names. All right. So when you cite, whether you direct quote or paraphrase, you still have to cite your source. All right. All right. So let's look at the task. Understanding your task is very important. Some prompts ask you to evaluate the most important factors or examine the most important factors. Others may ask you to argue the extent to which something should be done or develop a position about an issue. So let's look at this. If you argue the extent to which that is qualifying, right? So this is an argument. So synthesis is an argument, OK? So argue the extent to which means you're going to argue. Develop a position means you have to defend or challenge, right? But let's look at these two. Evaluate important factors and examine. So what is it? What there? There is a big difference between examining and evaluate. What does it mean to evaluate? To grade. Okay. So to grade or to judge. What do you mean by like to grade or judge? Like what do you mean by that? Yeah, so you kind of prioritize them a little bit. Okay, that makes sense. What does examine mean? How are you going to look at them? You're going to look deeply, yes. So you are looking at all the components where if you evaluate, you are ranking the components, right? Okay, so now the question is, how does that change your purpose? If you are asked to defend or challenge, or if you're asked to look closely or evaluate or examine, what's the difference? So in this prompt, we are actually asked to do what? Examine the factors. So how is that changing our purpose? Yeah, so really there's no position, right? You are looking at all aspects. So really, when it looks talks about purpose, you're trying to inform, right? You're not trying to persuade, right? So qualifying when it talks to you about an argument, either the extent to which or developing a position, now you are persuading, right? But for here, for examiner evaluate, you're just informing, right? How does that change your tone if you are examining or looking at everything? What kind of tone must you have? Yeah, I mean, you all have a little bit of a neutral. You can't be, like, no bias, right?
I think you also have to show like a, a sense of level headedness. In persuasion, you don't have to be as level headed as you do if you're trying to inform, right? All right, so underline the task of the prompt. What are you asked to do in this essay? So that's what we boxed up here, right? Examine the factors of group or agency. All right, so there are two parts. So don't spit back to me what is said in the prompt. Spit back to me and tell me exactly, like in your own words, paraphrase what you're being asked to do. So for this prompt, what are you being asked to do? So I think there's two things, right? What do you have to take into consideration when, now there's two because it's an and, when you do what? When you memorialize a person or event and the things you have to take into consideration when what? When you create it. Okay. All right, so now switch over to the other packet because I want to kind of show you how I would go through all of this on our actual document. So this is what the um, actual prompt page, the, the front page, um, looks like. Okay, so notice you have a total of two hours. That is for three questions. Okay. You're also given an additional 15 minutes to read sources. So the College Board knows that you need 15 extra minutes for this, right? So remember, here are your three parts, right? I don't suspect it'll be different. So there are your three parts. So here's what I look at. So when I see my prompt, I box it and I find my and right so I'm looking at that but then here's what I think so a couple of things so examine the factors a group or agency so this is going to be what I call my persona so as I'm writing this paper I am writing this as if I am a group or agency having to consider stuff right I'm not writing it as a high school student I am writing it as if I am part of one of those groups or the agency making decisions okay now what factors should we take in memorializing? So when we choose the who or the what, this is my planning that I would do before. So when we choose the who or the what, which is this first part, right? What do I need to consider? Okay, so the meaning to what? Okay, what else do I need to consider when I'm picking somebody? Popularity. What else? Okay, so if it will offend someone. And what do you mean by relevance? Okay, so relevance, and I think you could extend on that and say relevance to like the time period or even just the location where you're building it, right? Anything else you would want to consider when you're choosing an event or a person? All right, so the second part of this is in actually creating, right? So that's the second step. So now we talked about the who and the what, so now we need to talk about the where, when, why and how, basically, right? So what do we need to consider when we are creating a monument? Okay, the materials needed, and why is that important? Well, yeah, <laughs> but specifically, let's talk about the material, materials you're making it out of. Why is that important? 
Okay, so it needs to be aesthetically pleasing. And I'm copying out and saying pleasing to the eye. What else? Why else do materials matter? Stability. Stability. Okay. What else do we need to consider? Materials needed, what else? Okay. Why is location important? So relevance again to that person or event, right? What else does location, why does location matter? Do what? Yeah. Yeah. Are people already coming there or will it be something that brings people to this event or to this place, right? What else must we consider? Well, and I think that's what you're like the idea of like the information or the message, right? So like what do you want to portray? What else is important? Okay, so like is there a specific timing of opening? Like is it relevant to like July 4th or something like that? Yeah, I think budget is huge. Somebody said earlier, like, if you spend too much money, it's like you see, kind of be extravagant, right? Which we would expect for, like, a Beyonce one, right? Or if you don't spend enough, then it's cheap, right? It appears cheap. All right, so that is the plan. So this is our plan. When we are going into our essay, this is what we would want to plan before we even look at sources. Does that make sense? So we have an idea of what our own opinion is. Now we're going to see if we can sprinkle the sources into this. Does that make sense? Okay.